Chances are you've never heard of Tin Top, Texas. Small rural neighborhoods like Tin Top have a way of getting lost in Texas. 50 square miles of farm and ranch land hidden away in the rugged tableland south of Weatherford, bypassed in a steady march toward bigness. The Texas road maps don't mention Tin Top either. It's tucked away right in here on the valley of the Brazos, just west of Farm Highway 51 that runs from Weatherford to Granbury. A road sign on the edge of this highway marks the jumping off place. From here on, the roads are gravel top, dusty on hot summer days, and thick with mud after a rain. Seen for the first time, the center of community activities hardly seems like a community at all. Only a handful of buildings is all, a combination store and gas station at the north end, a house or two, a Baptist church, an outdoor tabernacle, and the Church of Christ, scattered across half a mile of windswept hilltop, along one side of a lonely backcountry road. That's just about all. Oh yes, there is another thing. Across the road from the Baptist Church, there's another building under construction. It's almost finished from the looks of it. Nothing very unusual, perhaps. You might see the same thing in countless other neighborhoods, just like Tin Top. Or would you? The fact of the matter is, this nearly completed building is unusual. In a way, it's kind of a symbol. It stands for the thing that makes Ten Top a community, and it sets Ten Top apart from the thousands of places its size and appearance all across America. So we ask you to keep this new structure in mind for a moment, while we find out more of the idea behind it. What is a community, anyway? The definitions are numerous, but someone has said it's an association in which a group of neighbors or relatives can know each other well, face to face, as whole individuals, not just as functional fragments of people. So maybe the place to start is with the people. The people of Ten Top are ordinary people, farmers, many of them, ranchers and cattlemen, too, and their wives and children. Sturdy people who know what it is to work with their hands patient people who know what it is to depend on the weather, quiet people and sometimes lonely people who know the meaning of solitude and isolation, hard-working people who know what it is to live off the land, decent people who know what it is to care for a family. their moments of worship. The people of Ten Top have memories too, rich memories and long. Memories that span the years and are connected in their blood and hearts to the people who came early to this land. The older ones remember. Born of pioneer stock, they felt the breath of history that was the fabrics of their childhood. They heard the stories of settlement firsthand from fathers and mothers who left the long years of civil war behind and headed west under the wide skies. And the memories came alive somehow and the land appears as it was a hundred years or more ago. The Lone Rider, a Santa Fe expedition scout, topping a rise to the south and looking out across this valley of the Brazos. A sea of grass, he called it, Seeing the broad sweep of fertile valley and the woodlots and the pasture land, and the fields and the bottom land, rich with the promise of harvest. This was a place where a man might come in freedom and build a decent life. So others followed and stayed to make their homes here, here in the valley where the water was. They built their cabins marked out their fences in stone, set out with dog and gun on a bright spring morning to hunt for game in the heart of the valley bottomland.
They broke their horses to harness, dug their plows deep into the earth. And carried on their endless struggle against the ever-present dangers of the frontier. Where people come to live and make their home, sooner or later their institutions follow, their churches and their schools. Yes, the older ones remember these things. Though the early ones are gone and their early memories are fading, a century stands behind them now, and the heritage is good. And yet, even in the proudest of communities, there comes a time, perhaps, when the heritage gets hard to hold on to. Perhaps the land gives out after a while, and no matter what a man tries to do, it no longer brings in enough to live on. Perhaps a sudden twist of weather. The killing drought that never seemed to end. The unexpected rains that spoil a rich and abundant harvest. Perhaps these things are enough to kill a man's spirit over a period of years. Or maybe it's just the little ordinary everyday things that dry up the heritage. The long working days that start early every morning. The fences to be mended. And the repairs to be made day in and day out. The constant struggle to overcome the handicaps of isolation, especially hard on the children. The rankling lack of facilities that make cheerless work out of daily routine. Facilities that city dwellers have at their fingertips. Or maybe it has to do with the neighbors. Neighbors who live not within calling distance, next door or across the back fence miles away down the road. And distance is always a matter to be reckoned with where friendship is concerned. And sometimes distance becomes a question of life and death when sickness comes on suddenly. And the answer lies far away along miles of lonely road on the outskirts of the county seat instead of at the other end of a telephone line or a few short steps down the street. Yes, distance here is often a question of life and death. But it may be that the fall lies elsewhere still. Maybe the decent promise of country life has been bypassed as America has marched steadily along the road toward urban bigness. Rural wealth and rural people are gradually draining away, draining off from the land, and this drainage has lately grown larger than life, a full-scale erosive blight on rural living. Educational subsidies draining off to the cities as consolidation, for better or worse, shuts down the country schoolhouse. As the colleges take rural young people away from their home communities for their rightful education, bringing them for the first time in their lives to a place of limitless opportunity, but only too seldom reversing the process and returning them to their communities again. Their hope for a decent life becomes attuned to the city, attuned to an urban way of life, and their productive years, their creative years, are spent in the cities where intriguing activities and cultural outlets are available for the seeking. Yes, the drainage of the land goes on without end. Interest payments, rentals, mortgage payments, all of it, rural wealth in the form of human and cultural resources moving down a one-way street toward the city. And little by little, isolation and disintegration creep like a blight toward the heart of a proud heritage.
Ken Top knows these things, knows them only too well. The first to go was its cotton gin, the gin with a shiny tin roof that gave the community its name. Moved away in the 20s. Next, the neighborhood store, shut down and boarded up, perhaps for good. Left alone, nature closed in and overran the heritage, and the rot of aid set in on the little churches. Spiritual life dwindled to a Lord's Day Bible class, kept alive by a traveling preacher on horseback for 50 years. This, the only remaining community activity. And then, the final blow. For good or ill, consolidations of schools reached Tintop. New ties, new allegiances for the children of Tintop in the larger world outside and beyond. The chances for renewal of community life, gone with a city-bound buses. Yes, Tin Top knows firsthand about disintegration and isolation and about decline. Then, a few years ago, something happened to reverse the trend, to restore vitality to a dying community. One of the families in the neighborhood decided to supply enough paint to redecorate the two Tin Top churches. One or two neighbors dropped in first of all, took up the brushes and set to work. But it wasn't long before a number of people came around to help with the job. More people than Tin Top had seen together in one place at one time for many years. The redecoration of the two churches didn't take long at all. Not with so many people helping, and Tin Top's church looked almost good as new again. The thing that took hold was the idea. The idea of working together for the common good, and this idea stuck. And the longer it takes to work itself out, the better as far as the people of Tin Top were concerned. The women made the next move, organizing a home demonstration club with the help of the county home agent. The ladies soon secured the help of the county agricultural agent, too, a man who was ultimately to exert considerable influence on the Tin Top community. One day he came out to a meeting and told the people about a contest, a special kind of contest for the improvement of rural life. It was called the Rural Neighborhood Progress Contest and was sponsored by a regional ranch and farming magazine and by the State College of Agriculture. The county agent announced that prizes would be awarded to the rural neighborhoods, which made the most progress toward improving their living conditions during the coming year. He thought perhaps that Tin Top might be interested in entering the contest. Neighborhood progress? Why not? It made a beginning already, and why not go on from there? So he called a second meeting of the whole community. And the county agent told his story again. Some aren't dead certain about it, but in the end, the ideas voted on and accepted 100%. A community-wide meeting for the first time in years. A new spirit, indeed, is being born in Tintop. Committees are formed to handle different parts of the program. Definite goals are set up in accordance with achievement standards from the contest sponsors. And work begins in earnest as evening planning meetings become a standard event. The first job the Progress Committee decides is to set about getting electricity. A survey is made of the facilities. Letters are written to the REA officials. Many trips are made to local offices in Weatherford and Granbury. This kind of concerted pressure isn't long in bringing results of a definite and exciting nature. In a few short months, Local crews are on the job, and power lines go up along the roads to Tin Top. And soon the kerosene lamps are put away, and wood stoves and ice boxes are obsolete. As most families in the area reach the harvest sunshine of REA electric service, a kitchen suddenly becomes more than a cheerless adjunct to live in, a place where disagreeable tasks are performed.
Next problem, the road. Located near a county line with only a few votes to bring the commissioner's way, Tentop faces a difficult problem in getting road work accomplished. Besides, the Brazos River cuts the area in two, and the only connection is an ancient one-way suspension bridge long since declared unsafe for heavy vehicles. Miles of unimproved country road lie between Tentop and its two market outlets at either end, Weatherford to the north and Granbury to the south. The same pressure is applied, and surveys on farm-to-market road use, more letters, and more trips in town to talk to commissioners, who by now have begun to realize that the people of Ten Top mean business. And something more this time, to drive the point home, Ten Top residents got together on their own time and with their own equipment and made their own improvements. Clearing brush from the rights of way doing their own grading and maintenance. Again, this kind of spirit brought results, more and better attention to Tintop's existing roads, and the promise of a new two-mile paved cutoff out from the heart of Tintop. Business soon realized that regardless of voting strength, Tintop demanded attention, and they resolved to see that it got it. The same kind of threat also brought to bear on the problem of rural telephone service. So far, telephones for Tintop are only a promise but the Progress Committee had only started, and it isn't going to give up until phone service is a reality. In the meantime, progress is made on scores of other activities. Homes are repainted and improved. Driveways are smoothed out, and farm entrance ways are fixed up. With help from the home demonstration agent, ten top women learn about new methods for home beautification and improvement. They learn how to save time, how to save energy about the house. The club launches a full-scale program of home canning and sets about the task of introducing some new clothes style to Tintop family. Tintop young people, perhaps the most important element in the human equation, the young people soon have a vital project of their own, a neighborhood 4-H club. The 4-H girls initiate projects in homemaking. and the boys were soon involved in livestock projects and other farm and ranch affairs. As for the men, suggestions from soil conservation experts help improve the yield from their land, while a &M specialists offer advice on problems of terracing to prevent erosion. Their own boys, as part of 4-H club work, and with assistance from the county agent, help out on other important tasks. The beef cattle on Ten Tops ranches show the effect of this care Fattened up and in prime condition, they'll bring good prices. And as always, Ten Top men continue to rest their living from the land, from spring planting to fall harvest, the seasonal life goes on. New methods taking the place of the horse and plow of a hundred years ago. And in the community area itself, things begin to take on a new look. The tabernacle receives a new roof and a concrete stage. The old gin foundations become a picnic ground, complete with a fancy barbecue pit and the heritage symbols of a century's living and a century's dying are cleared and preserved with loving hands. While in the churches, Sunday services begin again, the roots of spiritual life draw new vitality from the soil of fresh community spirit, making sure that the citizens of the future grow strong on such spiritual nourishment. Yes, you could see it in the faces of the children. Then Top had taken on a new lease on life. As the second year began, the committees went back to work once more, and this time something of an expert itself in these things, 
Tintop not only asked assistance from others, it gave assistance of its own. It offered help to neighboring communities and families on problems already met and solved in Tintop, such problems as home development, road maintenance, electrical facilities, civic improvements, and the organization of rural life clubs. And in its own neighborhood, spurred on by new goals and past achievements, scores of new projects were set in motion. School bus shelters were built, mailboxes painted, road signs designed and erected, and a new health program with regular medical checkups for the children was set up in the schools. A special project close to Ten Top's heart is its new and expanding game preserve. Already some 800 square miles of surrounding country have been incorporated in the reserve, and the area is constantly being stocked and maintained by Ten Top's game preserve members. But closer still to Ten Top's heart is a project in the reclamation of the human spirit, a blueprint for happiness that overshadowed every other phase of Ten Top's activity as the second year wore on. In its simplest form, the project is represented by a building. A building that developed from a blueprint became a tangible structure of wood and stone and concrete in the space of five short months. It came into being because the people of Ten Top had learned something important about the process we call living. They learned that the doing of a thing might have other meanings beyond merely getting satisfactory results. They learned that the doing of a thing could have meaning by itself. Especially if people are doing it together. They learn that each person has his own place in the sun, and that each person has a contribution to make to the common good. They learn that play is not necessarily a thing to be enjoyed after work, but that work and play can sometimes exist together in the same place. And they learn that the creative spirit is alive in people everywhere, and that experience which is shared with someone else is often the experience that takes on deeper meaning. They wanted a building which could symbolize these things and bring them together in one place. A place to meet and play and enjoy themselves. A place in which to spend their hours of leisure together. As the building took shape, these values became a part of the very structure itself. Everyone contributed in his own way and helped financially. Others donated materials. And others gave of their time and labor. Rock for the walls of the building were collected from all parts of the community. Collected from historic stone fences put together by early settlers. On a day in October, the ground was broken in a ceremony which people came from all over the county to see. At the same time, outside assistance was sought in order to develop a worthwhile program in the creative uses of leisure time. A graduate student in drama from Baylor University came to Ten Top to live for a period of five or six months in order to give first-hand assistance in the matter. While work was proceeding on the new building, Saturday night community meetings in the old church soon had a new name. Fun night. A time to come together. A time to develop talent. A time for recreation and the enjoyment of living. Volleyball courts were put up and everyone took part in the games. Each Saturday, a specific group in the community was responsible for fun night programs. New skills were learned. And unexpected talents were developed. But most important, it became fun for people to come together and enjoy themselves in their home community. And then, one day in the spring, the new building was ready for use. And the formal dedication ceremony opened 
of a living war memorial for the entire community. Two years ago, Tin Top seemed destined to go the way of many another small community. But today, this new community center stands as a living symbol of what people can do when they work together in a common cause. It stands for the intangible thing that makes the rural neighborhood a genuine community. It stands for the spirit that somehow came to life anew in the hearts of the people of Tin Top. And so the place to end is where we began, with the people. There are still many things left to be done, many problems to be met and solved, and many difficulties to be overcome. But the promise of American life has become a living reality for the people of Tin Top. It can become a reality in communities everywhere. What happened in Tin Top can happen anywhere across the face of the earth. It simply depends on the people.